Asbestos is the name of a group of naturally occurring mineral fibers found in the environment. Asbestos has many positive characteristics which have been proven useful for centuries. Asbestos use dates back to the ancient Greeks, early Egyptians, and the Roman Empire. Early uses for it were in tablecloths, pots, blankets, and even as clothing. Asbestos fiber does not deteriorate under normal usage, does not conduct electricity, and is very resistant to fire, heat, and corrosion. From the time of the Industrial Revolution right up through the 1970s, many new uses were discovered for asbestos in factories, production facilities, oil refineries, shipyards, and in thousands of commercial and consumer products. Asbestos has been used in paper products, paints, adhesives, insulations, cements, automotive parts, protective clothing, roofing materials, toasters, popcorn poppers, slow cookers, and in many other products. Unfortunately, this super material also contains a very dangerous quality. When handled, asbestos separates into microscopic sized particles which remain in the air and can easily be inhaled. When inhaled, asbestos can develop into many types of life-threatening diseases. As the hazards of asbestos became more known, bans and regulations were passed to limit its use. While the use of asbestos and asbestos products has decreased significantly in recent years, it can still be found in many residential and commercial settings and continues to pose a health risk to workers and others. This training program will examine various aspects of asbestos safety and will cover the following. Definitions Risk factors Presumed asbestos containing materials Health hazards OSHA rules and protections and general safety rules. Asbestos the name given to a group of naturally occurring mineral fibers used in a variety of products and building materials. Asbestos containing material or ACM any material containing more than 1% asbestos. Presumed asbestos containing material or PACM any material which is presumed to contain asbestos. Regulated area, an area established by the employer to demarcate areas where airborne concentrations of asbestos exceed or there is a reasonable possibility they may exceed the permissible exposure limits. Surfacing material, a material that is sprayed, troweled on, or otherwise applied to surfaces, such as acoustical plaster on ceilings and fireproofing materials on structural members or other materials on surfaces for acoustical, fireproofing, and other purposes. Thermal System Insulation, or TSI, an ACM applied to pipes, fittings, boilers, breaching, tanks, ducts, or other structural components to prevent heat loss or gain. Asbestos fibers are extremely small, lightweight, and invisible to the naked eye. Asbestos poses a health risk when the fibers are disturbed or damaged in some way and become airborne. Once airborne, the fibers can remain in the air for long periods of time and then be inhaled. Inhaled fibers become trapped in the lungs or embedded in the digestive tract if swallowed. Inhalation is the most prominent and dangerous route of exposure. Some situations which can cause asbestos fibers to become airborne include manufacturing of asbestos containing products, demolition of older buildings, remodeling, repairing, or upgrading buildings, deterioration of older buildings and materials, and cleanup after natural disasters. There is no known safe level of asbestos exposure. The degree of health risk depends on how much and how often you are exposed to the fibers and how long the exposure has occurred. The risk is greatest for those who are exposed to it on a regular basis. Different factors help determine the effects of asbestos exposure, including the dose or amount of asbestos a person is exposed to and the duration of exposure, the size, shape and chemical makeup of the asbestos fibers, the source of the exposure and the individual risk factors such as smoking and pre-existing lung disease. Smoking greatly increases the chance of lung cancer for those who have been exposed to asbestos. 
Due to the many positive characteristics of asbestos, it has been used extensively throughout the years in a number of building construction materials for insulation and as a fire retardant. Additionally, it has been used in a wide range of manufactured products, friction products, heat-resistant fabrics, packaging, gaskets, and coatings. Buildings, homes, and other structures, especially those built before 1980, should be presumed to contain asbestos until determined otherwise. Some possible areas asbestos may be found include attic and wall insulation containing vermiculite. Not all vermiculite contains asbestos, but the EPA estimates up to 30 million homes used asbestos-contaminated vermiculite insulation mined in Libby, Montana from the 1940s up through the 1990s. Vinyl floor tiles, ceiling tiles, the backing on vinyl sheet flooring and adhesives, roofing and siding shingles, transite, a cement asbestos composite commonly used as siding in industrial plants, textured paint and patching compounds used on walls and ceilings, walls and floors around wood-burning stoves protected with asbestos paper, millboard, or cement sheets. Hot water and steam pipes coated with asbestos material or covered with an asbestos blanket or tape. Oil and coal furnaces and door gaskets with asbestos insulation. Heat resistant fabrics. Automobile clutches, brakes and transmission parts. Asbestos is classified as a known human carcinogen and can cause lung and other cancers and other diseases. Mesothelioma is a rare form of cancer, but the most common form of cancer associated with asbestos exposure. The disease affects the thin lining of the lung, chest, and the abdomen and heart. Asbestosis is an inflammatory condition affecting the lungs. This disease causes shortness of breath, coughing, and permanent lung damage. Asbestos exposure may increase the risk for other cancers, such as cancer of the throat, kidney, esophagus and gallbladder. Smoking is particularly dangerous for employees who are also at risk of asbestos exposure. Smoking weakens the lungs and decreases their ability to remove asbestos fibers. Smoking also irritates air passages causing the body to produce more mucus. These things cause more blockages and further decrease the removal of asbestos from the lungs. The risk of developing lung cancer is far greater for smokers who are exposed to asbestos than non-smokers. When a cigarette smoker is exposed to asbestos, his or her risk of lung cancer increases by 50 times. If you are exposed to asbestos in your workplace, or if you might be exposed, it is important for you to not smoke. The OSHA standards provide regulations intended to protect employees from asbestos exposure in both the general and construction industry workplaces. It is important for you to review the standards specific to your workplace for complete information and to ensure compliance. OSHA provides the following protections. The permissible exposure limit, or PEL for asbestos, is 0.1 fiber per cubic centimeter of air as an eight-hour time-weighted average. This time-weighted average, or TWA, has an excursion limit, or EL, of 1.0 asbestos fibers per cubic centimeter over any 30-minute period. Employers must ensure that no one is exposed above these limits. Assessment of workplaces covered by the standards must be completed to determine if asbestos is present and if the work will generate airborne fibers. Monitoring is necessary to detect if asbestos exposure is at or above the PEL or EL for workers who are or may be expected to be exposed to asbestos. Frequency depends on work classification and exposure. The construction standard requires assessment and monitoring by a competent person. If the exposure has the potential to be above the PEL or EL, employers must use proper engineering controls and work practices to the extent feasible to keep it at or below the PEL or EL. 
where feasible engineering controls and work practices do not ensure worker protection at the exposure limits, employers must reduce the exposures to the lowest level achievable and then supplement with proper respiratory protection to meet the PEL. The construction standard contains specific control methods depending on work classification and the general industry standard has specific controls for brake and clutch repair work. Regulated areas must be established wherever airborne concentrations of asbestos and or PACM are in excess of the PEL or EL. Demarcation with warning signs containing specified language in areas that have exposures above the PEL or EL is required. Additionally, warning signs should be posted at all approaches to regulated areas so employees can read the signs and take necessary protective steps before entering the area. Smoking, eating, or drinking should never occur in the regulated area, and proper PPE must be provided and used to prevent exposure. Employers must include asbestos in the company hazard communication program to comply with the Hazard Communication Standard 1910.1200. In classifying the hazards of asbestos, at the very least, cancer and lung effects must be addressed. Separate decontamination and lunch areas with proper hygiene practices must be provided to workers exposed above the PEL to avoid contamination. Training requirements depend on the workplace exposure and classification. Training must be provided to all workers exposed at or above the PEL before work begins and on an annual basis. All training must be conducted in a manner and language in which the worker is able to understand. Workers who perform housekeeping operations in buildings with presumed asbestos-containing materials, but not at the PEL, must also be provided asbestos awareness training. Medical surveillance must be provided for workers who engage in certain classifications of work or experience exposures at or above the PEL in construction. Medical surveillance requirements are different depending on the industry. In general industry, medical examinations must be provided for workers who experience exposure at or above the PEL. Records must be kept on exposure monitoring for asbestos for at least 30 years and worker medical surveillance records retained for the duration of employment plus 30 years. Training records must be kept for at least one year beyond the last date of employment. OSHA has also mandated certain procedures regarding the cleaning of asbestos contaminated areas, surfaces and floors. These housekeeping rules are applicable to both the general and construction industries with little variation between the two. It is important to refer to the OSHA regulations as to the jurisdiction your job or workplace falls under for specific guidelines. Some of the basic housekeeping rules include all surfaces should be maintained as free as possible of ACM waste and debris and accompanying dust. All spills of material containing asbestos should be cleaned up as soon as possible. Compressed air should never be used to clean asbestos contaminated surfaces. Only HEPA filtered vacuuming equipment should be used for vacuuming asbestos or asbestos containing waste and debris. Sanding of asbestos containing flooring material is prohibited. Stripping of finishes should be done using a low abrasion pad at speeds lower than 300 RPM and wet methods. Burnishing or dry buffing may be performed only on asbestos containing flooring which has sufficient finish so the pad cannot contact the asbestos containing material. Unless you have received specific training related to asbestos exposure and have the appropriate PPE, you must avoid any and all contact with ACMs or PACMs. There are steps you can take to help protect you and your coworkers from any asbestos hazards. These include, but are not limited to the following. First of all, presume all building materials contain asbestos or ACM until determined otherwise. This applies mostly to buildings, installed thermal system insulation, troweled on surfacing, and asphalt and vinyl flooring material constructed or installed prior to 1980. 
Never disturb material that may contain asbestos by sanding, drilling, cutting, or grinding. Leave undamaged ACMs alone. Keep activities to a minimum in any areas having damaged material that may contain asbestos. Stay out of attics and crawl spaces and do not go above ceilings or behind walls unless the areas have been determined to not contain ACMs. Do not dust, sweep, or vacuum debris that may contain asbestos. Do not run cables or wiring through ceiling areas with asbestos. Do not put screws, nails, or other objects into asbestos ceiling or wall plasters. Never use a power stripper on flooring that may contain asbestos. Never sand or try to level asbestos flooring or its backing. Immediately report any damaged areas of buildings or any damaged building materials to your supervisor. Asbestos is very common in the workplace and construction industry. OSHA has recognized the hazard and developed programs to keep the workplace safe and you from unnecessary exposure. Always follow your company's rules and the OSHA mandates when working around asbestos and other materials that can cause you harm and disease. Even short-term exposure to asbestos may be dangerous. Never forget your PPE or take a shortcut to your safety.